Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Carissa Gaffari. And I'm Ricardo Shepard, and here's your news now. Get ready, Cabrini. According to weather.com, a cold front is headed our way for Halloween weekend. Temperatures will drop from the low 60s to freezing. You might wake up to morning snow showers on Saturday. Reminder to all students, Cabrini Day is scheduled for Tuesday, November 11th. There will be no daytime classes. The first class starts at 4.30 p.m. During the daytime, there will be social justice-oriented presentations by students and guest speakers on campus. Celebrate Halloween on campus with Saturday's Cavs Against Cancer's Booby Dance at 10 p.m. in Grace Hall. Tickets are $3 and sold at the door. All proceeds go to the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. Monday night in the mansion at 6 will be the annual mystery dinner. Sign up and seal to participate. Last Saturday, Cabrini College held an inauguration ceremony for new president, Dr. Donald Taylor. Location got to attend a special occasion to talk with students as well as the president about the special day. I think he's a really exciting change. He's exactly what this college needs. I think Dr. Taylor will bring a fresh start to the college with a um, bright future and a new vision. Cabrini College is already just a strong institution and I think under his tutelage, under his guidance, the brand is only going to get stronger and stronger. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you for coming to this inauguration ceremony and this celebration of Cabrini College. We are honored to have Sister Katrina Recuglia to promote social justice. of important symbols presented in an inauguration such as Argentina, Brazil, and Spain. And I hope that you share my enthusiasm in seeing what Cabrini College will become tomorrow. With all of that to accomplish, let's do what Mother Cabrini did her entire life. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Thank you, Godspeed, and go Cavaliers. It feels fantastic. It's like a uh, dream come true. It's a great fit uh, as far as the institution. Uh, I love being here to serve the students and it's, it's just, a, it's a wonderful college. Today's a great day, a great day. And that was your trip around the block. Let's check in with Howard Blake to see what's new at sports. The Eagles took on the Arizona Cardinals on the road. The Eagles lost in the last minute of the game due to a deep touchdown pass caused by blown coverage. Nick Foles threw for two touchdown passes and two interceptions. The defense has to be better and the Eagles must protect the football. But the Eagles are 5-2 and two and still tied for the division lead. The NBA season is finally here, and the San Antonio Spurs defeated the Dallas Mavericks on opening night 100-101, but all eyes were on Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. The Lakers took on the Rockets and were no match. The Rockets won 108-90, and James Harden led all scorers with 32 points, while Kobe poured in 19. It's swimming season, and we caught up with sophomore swimmer Todd Walker. Let's take a look. I have been swimming since I was six years old. Um, I've always been around water my whole life, uh, just been one of those kids that just hung around the pool, It's kind of a pool rat. A big motivator for me to swim would have to be the team aspect of it. Swimming is a unique sport in the sense that you can accomplish many things individually, but all your individual successes um, come together as a team. I swam together with Todd for years. We swam together at the Ridley YMCA, we swam together at Ridley High School. We were captains together in high school. He was always a leader by example. He always made every lap, every practice. He was dedicated to our team. He's dedicated to this team, and he really loves the sport. Todd Walker as a swimmer is definitely one of our 
highest point scorers. He's a top contributor to the team. He will be a big factor, not only at dual meets uh, during the season with the points he's able to score and put on the board. Um, he's a factor individually as well as in relays, but he'll also be a big factor come conference championship time where he's expected to definitely score in the top three for all of his individual events. So not only does he contribute point-wise, but I think he contributes by setting an example for the rest of the team. His work ethic is uh, kind of above par, and I think the, the guys and the other teammates see that. He's constantly pushing himself, giving 100%. He's quick off the blocks in the morning uh, when we do some sprint stuff, but he's you know right back at it in the afternoon. So, you know I never have to worry about the the level of effort he's putting in. So this past summer I trained with my old club team, the Ridley Area YMCA. Um, I did not take any time off. We trained really hard this summer. I trained purposely this summer just so I could come back better than ever this season. Um, I have a lot of goals this season to break my own records, if not new ones, qualify for the ECAC championship meet. Um, and get as many cuts as I can for that, as well as even possibly bring home um, an AMCC championship title with my team. I think he will actually do better than even he thinks he's capable of. So I, th I see it from him now, he's sprinting well, he looks great in the water, and he's only going to progress from there as the season goes on. The women's volleyball team defeated Elizabethtown College in their dig pink matchup. They wore pink uniforms in respect for breast cancer awareness. The Lady Cavs improved their winning streak to 16 games, the longest in program history. They look to take on Notre Dame University of Maryland in hopes to remain undefeated in the CSEC. Cabrini's athletic department is trying to give back to the community. They team up with Team Impact and are trying to impact the lives of children. Team Impact is an organization based out of Massachusetts. Uh, and what they do, they place children with severe illnesses, life-threatening or very severe, severe illnesses, uh, with college teams throughout the country. And the idea is to um, make a difference in the lives of some children who have health issues. We're looking for some activities, some community service programs that, that we can start getting into and a little bit more involved as an athletic department. And last spring, um, just some information about Team Impact came across our desk. So right away, you know, just in seeing what their their mission was and, and what they were about and what they they did, it made sense to us. So we called them right away just to see kind of what we could do to, to get on their on their list and, and get things moving. And there we are today. I think the press conference went very well. It was the first one done here at Cabrini with with Team Impact and uh, uh, I, it seemed like it went very well. I know that, that I was look, watching the children, Jordan and Coy, and they were having a ball, and their parents were also enjoying the moment. And, uh, and, our, and our team, uh, which, which I was looking around, they were all, I think, really caught up in the moment as well. You know, he had like an opening statement about, you know, the team. The team spoke, how excited they were to be a part of it. And he, had the, he even had, he had contracts for the kids to sign. Like they signed their name on the contracts and like it was a really like sweet moment to be able to see how excited these kids were to be a part of such a great experience. Like I said, it's, it's really a good opportunity for, for us to give back to the community um, as, as a department, as teams, as you know, coaches and athletes. And it's a chance for us to connect with some, some people that we may not otherwise come in contact with and um, you know, just broaden our sense of community. and, and increase the team. I hope that every team actually gets involved with Team Impact because it's a great um, it's a great program for the kids as well as uh, the athletes as well because some athletes step on the field and they take for granted uh, the abilities that they can have um, and I think that us having these kids on our team shows our girls that not to take it for granted. So if we can a little bit of, of, of happiness in their lives for next year or so, then it's a great thing. It's really great that teams are doing this, Howard. Yeah, and hopefully more teams can do this as well. All right, thanks, Howard. Now let's look at what's happening in Australia. Researchers in Sydney, Australia have been working on a way to revolutionize heart transplant surgery for years. Medical experts have developed a method that would allow doctors to remove hearts that naturally stop beating in donors instead of removing donor hearts from patients who are brain dead. Over the span of a few months, three cases of successful heart transplants have been reported. According to Victor Chan Cardiac Research Institute in Sydney, this new technique will result in a major increase in number of hearts available for transplantation. 
Earlier this week, terrorists kidnapped at least 30 children from a village located in northeast Nigeria. The militia has also kidnapped 60 females in Christian Nigerian villages. Nigerian authorities say that if these criminal offenses by the Boko Haram continue, there are little to no hope for the anticipated release of over 200 schoolgirls abducted by the group since April. In a case that may mark the turning point for women in Afghanistan, CNN reports that a cleric was convicted of raping a 10-year-old girl inside a mosque. The clerk was sentenced to 20 years in prison after the court rejected claims that the sex was consensual. Women's rights groups say that no actions have been taken to end abuse against women up until now. Activists hope that the courage of the 10-year-old girl in court will give others the hope that they will get justice as well. And those are this week's big issues. Now let's take it over to Morgan for your entertainment update. On Nicki Minaj's new single, Only, featuring Drake, Lil Wayne, and Chris Brown, she breaks down the rumors on sleeping with Drake and Lil Wayne. She always spoke on them just being family to her and nothing else, but it doesn't seem as though it could never happen. In the lyrics, Drake and Lil Wayne denied the rumors, but did not completely exit the thought of things happening in the future. Drake definitely seems to not hold back on the thought of pursuing after her eventually. What do you guys think about this story? Tweet us more about your thoughts. Kylie Jenner's lips seem to look bigger every picture she takes on Instagram, but she denies the rumors about her receiving lip injections. She says that she is bored with all the talk on her mouth and that people should realize that she is only 16. Jenner continues to say that she wears makeup to look as if her lips are bigger, but she will take the rumors as a compliment. I think whether she had injections or not, they look good, so don't stress, Kylie. You look great. Now, there are some things that cannot be hidden with makeup, and on KTLA's morning show, one of the anchors, Ginger Chan, called her co-anchor, Sam Rubin, fat. She apparently thought her microphone was off, but it was not. He made a joke about his wife calling him fat, and she totally agreed. She planted her head in her hands, and everyone laughed. At least the news studio took it with a grain of salt and laughed it off. Ginger Chan later posted why the word fat can be taken as a problem. Big ups to Mr. Sam Rubin for taking a diss like that, like a champ. Okay, now that was your entertainment update. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. College students as well as women all ages know the steps that they should take to keep themselves aware and safe from cancer that is dear to the hearts of anyone who has family members or a friend that has had this affect their lives. Um, student Health Services does a couple things to promote Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we've already distributed shower cards to the residence halls and it had information um, to hang from your shower head about self-breast exam. And tomorrow we're in conjunction with um, our fitness center hosting Think Pink Day. And there'll be information outside of Cab's Corner at the Health Hut uh, about breast cancer um, prevention and um, treatment options. For, for traditional college age, age students, we're very fortunate that the incidence of breast cancer is extremely low. Um, so it's a great time in your life to get used to what your breasts look like, what they feel like, what's normal for you. Um, we really don't get too concerned about breast cancer unless there's a strong family history until women get older. Um, we don't recommend mammograms until the age of 40 uh, for women, again, unless there are some of those um, risk factors including family history. And the treatment, um, I, I believe breast cancer um, treatments have led to an increased um, life expectancy. Student Health Services or Health Services is located on the first floor of Founders Hall and we're here uh, Monday through Friday and we see patients for routine illness and injury. So if you have any concerns, any health questions, please feel free to stop by, no appointment necessary. Breast cancer has touched probably every one of our lives in some way, whether it's a close family member or a friend. Um, so I think cancer in general is something that um, we'd be really fortunate to be able to have a better handle on. So I think any research done on one kind of cancer often can help with other kinds of cancers. So um, sure, breast cancer is a, is a really worthy cause. Now let's take a look into what's coming up next week on Location News. Let's send it over to Ted. Happy Halloween, Cabrini. Next time on Location News. We will talk about how cyberbullying affects college students. Then we cover our cap board advisors winning outstanding professional awards at regional conference. Followed by an interview with Madeline Coutu. All this and more only on Location News. 
Thanks for joining us this week, Cabrini. For Location Weekly News, I'm Parissa Gaffari. And I'm Ricardo Shepard. Be sure to stay up to date with us by following us on our social media. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini.